Lord, your eyes burn me. I don't deserve mercy nor forgiveness. O Lord, have mercy on my soul. Who are you sending me? Is death to whom you are handing me over? Has my hourglass already run out of sand? Father Ernest. Ernest. It's been many years since I heard that name. Since. Oh, I see. Father, I'm here to be able to remember. You have to help me, I beg you. Pleas, entreaties, petitions, praying, torment, exemption. Past times bring us just misfortune and pain. Father Ernest, I was one of your students. One of my old students, you say. It's only the Lord who teaches us. We all must follow his ordinance and disciplines. Get closer, son. Come pray next to me. Probably really shouldn't actually, don't. Okay. That's fine. Oh, okay. A creepy image of Christ crucified. Inexplicably, it has a dark cloth covering his head. Is that whose eyes you're not supposed to be looking into? The makeshift altar is coated in a dense layer of wax. Candles, having almost burned out, only barely illuminate the room. Ah. <laughs> Um, definitely don't look into his eyes, though. Can I, can I just, like, knock him out? No? Okay. I'm gonna... Time to cry! He has a large burn covering his eyes. He is completely blind. Despite his decrepitude, extreme thinness, and paleness, I can still recognize Father Ernest. But he seems far away, like in another world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Now, my son, tell the Lord which is his, which one is his voice, the sharp sword, the wise quill, or the delicate petal. Hmm. Hmm. Which is his word? A delicate petal. Oh! No, no, no! You're enveloped by sin. And now, my son, tell the Lord which is his holy path. The wise virtue, the endless blame, or the blessed penance. Uh... How many of these do I have to get wrong until I get, like, murdered? Uh, the Endless Blame. Yes, yes, that's it, my son. Nostra couple infinita est, and it is, or er, and it always was and will. And now, my son, tell the Lord, who are you? The Faceless Pilgrim, the Gate Guard, or the Lost Seaman? I am probably... Uh, one of these. Um, if it's Eldritch, I should definitely go for being lost at sea. The lost seaman. Yes, yes, that's it, my son. We live lost in an endless ocean of sin and blame. Exactly. See, you get it. Now leave me alone. I have to purify my soul. Okie dokie. Nothing bad will happen in this hallway. I was being sarcastic. I totally thought something bad would happen in this hallway, but it didn't. Something terrible is happening out here, though. Mother Elizabeth is trying to make him come to his senses. Should I go back and talk to the Monsignor? There was a paper on the floor I really wanted to read.
Where did she go? This... This guy. Alright, no, don't investigate that, just keep walking. Whoa, no, don't do that. Wish there was a way, can I get the... Actually, where did, um... Baldwin, is that his name? It started with a B. Where did that guy go? Is he, uh... Doing a mischief somewhere? <laughs> Honestly, every time that song starts, it it sounds like Mad World. And it makes me giggle. Baldwin? Doing a mischief? No? <sighs> Are you doing a mischief upstairs? Is this sharp enough to... Syringe cannot be used to cut the tapestry. Damn. Just a couple of old towels. And I have no desire to look under them. Because I only look under the things... How come it hasn't taken a... Music box and coin out of my inventory. Yep. Well, she is praying fervently. Uh, okay. I have no idea what to do again. Back to bother the Monsignor. This is the worst idea. The bird eye. That's what I want to walk into. Mumble. Hi. Four witnesses. Murmur. For you, dear God in heaven, I feel myself in you. Your eyes are in my soul. I will burn it for you. Dear God in heaven, I fear myself in you. Your sword is in my hands. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I hate myself in you. My blame is in your heart. <coughs> I will burn myself for you. Hey! Turn. It's okay. Forgiveness is in the fire. Cool by. Okay. Why is it bloody though? Oh, because he ripped out his eyes, right? Probably. 
Did it say he was blindfolded, or did they burn him clothes? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's something terrible going on in this place, but I'm going to... Fucking... Oh, okay. Correct. Off part of this place anyway. Finally, our expert on philosophy, Jeremiah Devitt, shows up. Where were you, my friend? We have been looking for you. Pause to drink. Well, I was saying, tonight is the perfect moment for our next meeting, but I suspect that someone outside our group is secretly surveilling us. Who is it, Anthony? My dear friends, it is Professor Glynn. Do you mean Father Ernest? Certainly, no doubt about it. Therefore, dear colleagues, I've decided to change the venue for tonight's meeting. Have you noticed the lounge behind the small door of the classroom? I have believed the lounge behind the small door of the classroom. I have believed convenient to borrow the key for our necessities. You already know. At 12 o'clock, you will find that door opened, and I'll be inside the lounge. That is it, my dearest colleagues. Vid... Vidite ne... Quisciat. I don't know Latin. <laughs> I remember that... In this furniture, we used to keep some of our personal belongings. Now it is empty. The walls are in complete disarray. I could probably punch through it if I tried. Uh, did you want to try? I remember that this is the bed where I used to sleep when I was a student here. The fuck is that? Really, you're just gonna have a- oh my god. Mate. Mate, what the fuck? Mr. Rabbit was jumping through the forest in a warm spring afternoon. That's nice. This is just a dream, right? When going through a brush bush, Mr. Rabbit ran into Mr. Wolf, Mr. Vulture, and Miss Snake, who were having a heated argument. What the hell is this? Oh dear, okay. Mr. Rabbit, curious, asked them. Dearest, why are you arguing in this beautiful and cheerful spring afternoon? We can't decide who's gonna eat you. Mr. Wolf answered politely. But we are trying- yep. Mr. Rabbit, really scared, said. But I do not want to be eaten. I want to live. To which Mrs. Snake answered, smiling, That is impossible to happen, Mr. Rabbit, since we all, both you and us, are going to die sooner or later. Don't you think so? Yeah, but it can wait. I have lots of stuff to do. What is this shadow? Mr. Vulture added, Mrs. Snake is right. We should stick to the issue at hand. It is getting late, and, as you see, we do not agree. Do you want to help us decide, Mr. Rabbit? Who would you suggest as the one to eat you? What is this shadow? What is that shadow? After thinking about it for a while, Mr. Rabbit came up with an idea and carefully said, I got it. Why not organize a race? The first who arrives to the forest clearing will have the privilege to eat me. No doubt Mr. Wolf can run at high speed, but Mr. Vulture can go flying and o avoid any obstacle. And I'm sure Mrs. Snake knows all the shortcuts within the forest. What do you think? I'm gonna beat you all there, ha ha. Those are definitely people. This is fine. The three predators agreed that it was fair, so they started to the race, and they quickly disappeared.
purple. Mr. Rabbit, happy to trick them, started running at high speed in the opposite direction of the predators, who, eager to prove their worth, didn't realize the trick. Mr. Rabbit was far away from there, and he finally felt safe, happy and proud of his kind. But suddenly there was a loud bang, the earth shook, frightened birds flew away, and everything went dark. The end. It was fine. Alright, bye. That was nice. <laughs> An impossible love. There is something I keep to myself kept it to myself for a long time. And the thing is that I love you. I have always loved you. Just in time. This is the first time I saw you. Since the first time I felt your frozen hands. Each time I move away from you, I miss your glassy, empty, dead eyes. What the fuck? I miss your rough hair, your grayish skin, your stench. But our love just cannot be. It is an impossible love. The end. Great dreams there, buddy. No, not again. How long have I been sleeping? What was all that about? The nightmare I had found in the nightmare I had found a place a place of my memories. Dusty mirror. Okay. How long has it been? Was it even a time? I don't think it was. Oh. Okay. Dude automatically moved for a moment, and I was like, what's going on? Okay. What was the hallway I was walking down? Uh, classroom, classroom, this way. My disturbing nightmare, I was brought to this spot. Excellent, let's stand there. I knew there was something under that freaking rug! I called it, I called it, I called it. It's the trap door I saw in my nightmare. From here sprouts a horrible stench. There is something down there. It's a person... Oh, it's lots of people. Did you see? Did you see? It was there, just in front of me. That thing it was screaming. He shakes uncontrollably, his body racked with pain, and there is only one way to end his suffering. Oh, here we go. Was he shaking, were the pixels shaking on purpose, or? Rest in peace. A decayed corpse of a young woman. It seems as if she had been devoured by an animal. Yay. Walls are splattered with dried blood. Alright, that's a door that I'm not going into yet. 
because I absolutely 100% forget that. <sighs> the stretchers used to carry the corpse here. Corpses here. Who is behind all this? Probably the dude who's missing. He must have been dead at least a week, still bearing an expression of horror. Ugh, alright, time to go through the creepy door. Shock! It's the groundskeeper. Oh, it's a memory. Punctual as always, debit. Now all that remains is to introduce our guest. You may come in now, Professor. Father Ernest! Do not worry, my friend. I invited him to join us this evening. The Professor genuinely shares our curiosity, and who better to complete our group than one of the most renowned theologists? Moreover, we mustn't ban those who are willing to explore beyond the veil. The moment we have long awaited is now arrived. Please, all of you, take a seat, and we shall begin the procedure. Soon shall the door be open, and then may we finally see what lies beyond. Now I ask that you close your eyes. You feel a momentary prick as I inject you with the serum. Oh, God. Even after all these years, I have not forgotten your voice. You are the fourth witness. I remember. I remember now what happened. What is that? What is that we saw? The eye of the bird. Malamin say. What happened to us? What is it that we witnessed? You must tell me. You must make me understand what my mind cannot fathom. It was our curiosity that damned us. We opened that which should not be opened. In doing so, we shorn the veil that separated our world from his. In seeking vision, we were ourselves seen by the eye of the bird. It remembers us. It looks for us. It calls us from its dark nest, from its abominable lair. Abominable. <laughs> it's got a sick six pack, bruh. All these years I have attempted to return to it, but I have no strength left. These poor, wretched creatures are too fragile. They lack the sight to return. Not one of them has. Only us, the four witnesses. Who are the other two? Where are they? They disappeared as you did. I haven't heard from any of you, but I was seized by curiosity. It absconded with my faith and depraved me of sanity. O oh Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Nothing remains. All that is left is to surrender, surrender to him. Gravely have we sinned, and now our only absolution is to burn, to burn in the flames. Malum. Say. I don't speak Latin, I'm sorry. Uh. I mean, I knew it, but I didn't expect it to be that bold. Oh, this is when I get buried alive. This is fine. That's me! <laughs> the adventure continues in episode 3. Does it? Do does it? <laughs> Alright. So that was nice. We're gonna take a break. Cause... We're gonna take a break. 